Hello everybody, ciao a tutti, welcome to Art with Miss B. And I know if you notice something new, it's just that I cut my hair since I'm about to leave for my vacation in Italy and I'm very excited and I want something fresh because here in Utah it's extremely hot and I know that in Europe and in Italy is hot as well. Today is going to be our first practice about the element of value, which I told you previously because I kind of introduced it uh, a little bit in our previous practice, so the like uh, video number nine. Right, today is our video number 10. I cannot believe it. It's already our 10th video. I'm happy. Anyway, in video number nine, we were talking about texture and we used like a, a project inspired by Van Gogh technique and uh, we kind of introduce a little bit of value. Value is basically the optical illusion of light and darkness, light and shadow in everything that we create. It could be a drawing, a painting, whatever. It's basically uh, pretending that the light it uh, our piece, our surface from a direction that could be left and right and above you know, below whatever, and you use different tones of the same colors or darker and lighter colors to represent this. Of course, like as we discussed when we did the still life uh, and we were painting it, I pretended that the light hit my piece from the left. So the left side of my paper was lighter and I used, for example, a lighter blue compared to my right side of the paper where I use a darker blue for the background, a darker color for the vase and a much darker color for the shadow that the vase was reflecting on the table, right? So you kind of um, had a little... Um, introductions but today we're going to do something fun because value can be really challenging you know it's not easy for example with a pencil when you want to learn a realistic uh, drawing realistic painting uh, you need to exercise it a lot right because with just one same media which is in that case would be the pencil or a pen or whatever you're using you need to be able to represent this uh, light and dark this light and shadow right why do we use value just because the value makes uh, all of our pieces look more dynamic, uh, uh, more interesting, uh, more alive. That doesn't mean that you cannot create something that lacks of value totally, because it may be you have the goal to create something still, something very like a flat, go for it, and you don't have to use the value. However, if you want to master realistic drawing, realistic painting technique, value is definitely an element that you absolutely need to know. And also, I think that uh, the practice that we are going to do today, since uh, we are going to study and approach a value through the colors, is going to be an extremely good practice for you to review the color wheel. If you didn't do the practice, like the practice with me about the colors, if you didn't watch the video number four, five, and six, if I recall correctly, please, uh, I really... I highly encourage you to do that first because you really need to know for today's practice uh, the color wheels. When we did the color wheels, we talk about primary, secondary, and most of all tertiary colors, right? And we talk about the lighter and darker tones of the same color. For example, light orange, medium orange, dark orange, right? So today we are going to use those mid tones to create like a, a nice, uh, uh, you know, exit product, or let me say project about value. Uh, since I'm about to go to Italy, one of the first thing that I think about it is gelato. Now, if you never had gelato, you cannot understand, but if you had gelato, you know what I'm talking about. So today we're going to create nice shapes to represent four different gelatos, and then we are going to study different like colors. For example, we get the blue, we get the red, we get the green, we get the pink or purple, and we are going to represent the value through the lightest tone all the way to the darkness, the darkest, darkest, my goodness. Um, I'm using markers, but you can use any media that you have available for this practice. So for instance, if you have a box of 24 or 36 crayons, go for it. Unfortunately, I couldn't find mine this morning. Otherwise, I would have used crayons, honestly. If you have a box of 24 or 36 pencils, go for it and use color a pencil. If you have markers, like I'm using markers, go for it. Any brand is 
uh, fine. The focus is actually just on the colors and on the tones and a little bit of the shape that we need to create in order to have our gelatos that show value. Um, we also need a pair of scissors and then a glue stick. If you don't have a glue stick and you have liquid glue, it's totally fine. That just don't use too much. You just need a drop because we're using paper. Then we need also a pencil for drawing, a regular piece of copy paper because you're going to uh, try the markers or the pencil or the crayons on this paper before using it on the final paper. And then the final paper, I'm using a thick mixed media paper. If you have watercolor paper, any thick and heavy paper that you have. I'm going to turn the camera so I can kind of show you the piece that we created together last time just to make sure that you understood the value and then we are going to start the practice and it's going to be very nice and colorful. This is a perfect for beginner and young artists. If you're an older artist, if you're an intermediate or an advanced, you can do exactly the practice that I do, but you can challenge yourself at the end, adding some pattern or maybe cutting out the shapes and add them on uh, a surface and create a beautiful doodle, a beautiful artwork, or you can kind of do different shapes, but just focus on the value through the colors. Okay, so I'm going to turn the camera and then uh, we start. Okay, guys, here we are. I'm going to show you very quickly what we did the last time. This was a practice about the element of texture, right? We get inspired and representing a um, real and implied texture and uh, as you can see and as you notice uh, one side of the paper is lighter compared to the other side of the paper that is darker the color that i use for the table are much lighter here than here mostly when there is the shadow from the vase the colors that i use for the vase is much darker here than here but still is the same tones for example here we have a darker red then goes all the way to lighter red sort of pink pink and light pink the same i use a darker yellow and a lighter yellow for the flowers and a darker green and a lighter green for the leaves this is one of the way that we can represent the value we can keep that idea of three-dimensionality that uh, optical illusion of light and make our piece much um, you know more dynamic i would say like a more real anyway we put this aside and here is my regular copy paper just a regular piece of small paper that then you can throw away you don't need to save this in the portfolio and i am preparing my markers because as i told you i'm gonna use the markers but you get to use a colored pencil crayons markers whatever you have available if you want to use the watercolors so go for it because actually in the practice that we did let me just go back and check in my folder in the practice that we did together, creating the color wheel and actually creating already the value of each tones and each color. We use watercolors. So you are now able to also use watercolors. And remember, if you do not have a color, we can mix the color together, right? If you don't have a dark orange, you're going to use an orange and then maybe scrub a little bit of a uh, uh, red on top to make it a little darker so i'm going to prep my um colors and i'm gonna try first before using them over here so i will have the light yellow i will have a deep yellow i have a, a light orange dark orange and red and make sure that you have them ready next to you no matter what you're using you have them already next to you in order right so we are going to do the same for the green i have a very light lime green i really like this color i have a bright green medium green darker green and the darkest that I don't have in the same size of the tip, so I will have to use these extra fine markers. Now I do the same with my blue. There we go. And uh, let me see if I can. There we go. Light blue. A little darker. Dark. 
her very beautiful electric blue ocean blue and then oh my midnight blue beautiful and finally we do the pink light pink pale pink if you do not have many option with the pink and the light purple you can actually skip this and focus on the three primary colors I might actually focus on the three primary color myself just for the sake of time. But this is a good exercise that we're doing because you're basically building and organizing the colors according to their value. Lighter, darker, lighter, darker, lighter, darker, lighter, darker. Okay, so now you have your reference ready and you're going to place a side next to you in a place that you can see and you can start the, the practice. I'm using a thick piece of vellum paper, whatever you have available, go for it and use it. We are going to use the space very, very well because I don't want you to waste paper. We are going to trace all the shapes that we need. We are going to color them and then we're going to cut them. So make sure that you don't do them too big but you use your space wisely. Just in case you run out of space, just get a second paper and uh, you can, uh, um, you know, finish what you started. So first we're gonna prep the base for our gelato. Oh my goodness, I cannot wait. We have a one, Two, they are basically triangles. And as you can see, I'm doing freehand, so no need to use the ruler, no need for them to be perfect. Just need to be like a very long upside down triangle, right? And now each gelato will have a five balls on top, right? Because we have five colors, five tones on the same color on top of each gelato so pretend my friends if you're a beginner this is a good reference pretend that you want to do a rainbow and then the bottom you're going to use a smooth rounded and curved line we did many exercises together about the line so you should know what to do we're going to do the same leave a space between them because you're going to cut them at the end two Three, they look like tiny ghosts, don't they? <laughs> Three, four, and five. And we repeat, which is an extremely good exercise for you, my friends. One, two, they don't have to be perfect, it's gelato, remember. And it's so hot outside that it's gonna melt pretty quickly. So let's make it very, very, you know, that is melting already. It's gonna be realistic, at least for the temperatures that we have here in Utah today. Five, repeat. You're almost there. I always encourage you to kind of read the description box. Uh, if you are a child, you will have your parents read them as well so you can prep the materials or you can kind of listen the instructions at the beginning at the directions that I'm giving and then uh, pause the video, prep the materials and practice together with me. But you can also watch the video, speed it up so you know what it is expected and what we are doing and then do it at your own convenience. Remember also, friend, that you are free to copy what I do but you're also free to change a little bit mostly if you are an older student or are an intermediate and you want to try to do something different you can still like uh, um, take inspiration from my project look at that and then do something a little different so we have one two three four five on each one of our gelato so now we started to color them very simply just remember try to stay inside the shape if by accident something happens it's not a problem because we're going to use a black marker to do the outlines so it's going to be easy for you to cut i'm going to start from the uh, tones with the red so i'm going to prep you see the markers that i decided to use if you use crayons on pencil prep them on top of your paper so you won't uh, make any mistakes so you have already the colors set and organized for you you just have to grab them in order one by one 
Remember with the markers, you can use this technique of short movement. You can outline first the shape that you have to color to make sure that you stay inside. And then you can just do small strokes or you can go slower, do longer strokes, and then just pretend that you're tracing line up and down, up and down, up and down, filling up the space. So whatever is the technique that you like the most, go for it and use it. Um, the, the important thing is that you basically have a good result and you feel the space, you learn to don't leave any gaps and don't change the direction of the strokes very much because it's going to uh, ruin a little bit your piece, right? And also every time that we use a supply, a media, we should take advantage and always practice a good technique so we become a better and better and better, right? And you will be able to create a better pieces that you feel very happy about, very proud and accomplish most of all. Because sometimes if you rush in through the practice or if you still don't master the technique, you are disappointed by the result, which is still part of the process. Disappointment is also part of life, right? The frustration and the disappointment that something happened and it goes not exactly as we planned, but we keep practicing to get better and to master the technique. This is why I love fine arts, because it's such a good... Um, life, you know, it, it kind of give us the opportunity to really learn important life lessons. Take your time. If you need to go slower, go slower. If you're using pencil, probably you will use uh, this technique uh, and also crayons. I always uh, stress uh, this concept with my students. Don't do long strokes because you think that you want to do faster. First, uh, we don't practice art. You don't practice art with me online because you want to do faster. You just actually want to enjoy and learn, right? And second, at the end, you will have to retouch it anyway. So it is better to do it uh, very nicely since the very beginning. This is a dark orange. So, as I was saying, crayons and pencil, you can use these short strokes. Let me tell you, friends, that I cannot wait to eat my gelato. I think I'm going to have a gelato every day for lunch. Mm, I'm going to try all of my fla favorite flavors. I love hazelnut and pistachio that we actually, in Italian, you know that pistachio is pistacchio because we use the C and the H next to each other to simulate the sound of a K because we don't have a K in our alphabet. And so pistacchio is like when you say bruschetta, and I was, believe it or not, they corrected me in New York when I say bruschetta, because it's still written with a C and an H, so it's a hard sound. And someone in a restaurant, in an Italian-American restaurant in New York, they corrected me and they say bruschetta, and I didn't say anything back to them, because, you know, I respect Italian-Americans, they created their own sort of a slang or dialect. However, I was laughing a little bit because it's actually, say, well, actually it's bruschetta. It's like pistacchio. But it's okay. I feel that, you know, I made up so, I make up so many words in English and I mispronounce them that honestly is all part of the game. Now, let's go with our blue and we're going to start from the lighter blue. I will do short strokes with this one because I feel that my marker is almost dry. Sometimes when the markers are almost dry, you have to kind of give them a, the time and the opportunity to show their ink. So if you do something fast or long strokes, you might not be able like to show the color. So, and I really like to use my supplies until the very, very last drop. This is something that I learned in school because the school budget are very limited and art supplies are very expensive and I need to plan for hundreds of students because I teach 
the whole school basically the elementary kids and the middle school kids and the first year of high school so i need to make sure the students learn how to save and use the supplies until the very end so a very good coloring technique will also help you to use the supplies until the very very last drop and you know you will avoid wasting money and wasting material it's something that we don't want this one instead has more ink and so i'm gonna switch back to my favorite technique to you know to use with markers that these long slow strokes or lines i like this technique because i relax myself in watching the, the tip of the marker going up and down up and down Remember to outline the shape. And remember, friends, if you are a beginner and if you are a young artist and you have these shapes of the gelato a little different than mine, and don't get frustrated, please. Don't get upset. Um, oh, mine doesn't look like Miss B. Why mine is all, uh, my, mine are not all the same. It is fine. After all, we are representing gelato, which is something that melts very very easily and very quickly so the focus uh, just stay focused on what is important about this project what is important about this project is that we are studying value we are understanding the element of value through the colors so through the same tones so sorry through different tones of the same color family we are building a value scale from light to dark. So this is the focus of today's exercise. Nothing else matters. It doesn't matter if you don't have Sharpie and you're using a different type of markers. It doesn't matter if you're using pencil. It doesn't matter if you're using crayon. So what does matter is that at the end of this practice that you all understand how we can give this optical illusion of light and darkness of light and shadow through colors and it's an incredibly good exercise for your fine model skills and a great review about the color wheel so please do not get upset or do not stress about the fact that your project look different than mine actually it's much better because as i always say oopsie my goodness i with the marker as i always say to my students we never aim for per perfection first because honestly what is perfection maybe something that looks perfect to me might not be perfect for somebody else and also let's say that we have everything really like the same or without any like a little mistakes or, or any variation whatsoever that would be so boring can you imagine so we never go for perfection we go for personality we go for our own touch to every project that we do and this is another great life lesson that art allowed us to reflect on right we don't have to be all the same. We don't have to perform exactly the same way. We don't have to look all the same. We have to embrace our differences. We need to embrace our personality, our bodies, our characters, and work hard on our skills. This is what we have to do. This is going to take a little longer because I didn't have a medium point, a dark blue. And so I'm using the extra fine markers. And you see, I, use, I also use what I have available. In video number one, when I introduced myself and this channel, I was very clear about the fact that I want this channel to be a nice, positive, safe space for us to learn, review, and get better in art techniques, learn about the elements and the principle, but I wanted most of all to be something doable, 
easy, approachable. You know, art is for everybody who is willing to learn and practice. So I don't want any stress about, oh my materials, this and that, any stress at all. Now we go with our green and we start with the very lime yellow green. I really like this color. Definitely, this is really my palette. These two, the blue and the green, is definitely my side of the color wheel, the side that I'm most attracted to, most inspired to. You know, it just connected, with, connected me with nature, with the ocean, the sea. It's like, a, but maybe you're very into this palette or the pink palette. And this is what I like about the colors, that each one of us interpret the colors, use the colors, and connect to the colors in a different way. I try my best to show you both techniques, long strokes, short strokes. What is important is that you feel the space that you create uh, without any gaps so you want to see that color really really saturated inside which means like a very intense very bright because it's going to help you to understand the transition right between uh, uh, lighter tones and uh, darker tones these are uh, project, this type of art, it can also be called the pop art, right? Popular, pop is taste for popular art, because we think, we take something very common, very popular, something that everybody knows, everybody eats, something that is not an artwork per se, but we actually turn it into an artwork. I don't know if you ever heard of the artist Andy Warhol, he used, like, he created somehow, he found that this movement of pop art where he used a very common popular object and he turned them into artworks. And he actually was a pretty big on colors and representing the same object over and over or the same subject over and over, just showing a different colors. If you want to kind of... Uh, look uh, on internet and the world make sure that you kind of uh, you know ask your parents before you do research and you make sure that they can help you to spell it properly and also to select the images that you want to uh, look at for reference and I have my darker and this is gonna take a little longer because once again I didn't have a medium tip for the dark green and I have these extra fine markers now if your hands mostly if you're a young artist if your hands is tired that you can shake it shake it shake it do some gymnastic and then go back and coloring if you want to divide like a break the practice in two maybe you can just listen to the direction at the beginning um and do the like a drawing and maybe color just two and then on the second practice you will color the other two gelatos and then you will complete the practice as i always say you do you I have many different viewers, maybe some of you is a student, is a homeschool student who is enriching the curriculum through my lessons and in that case you might want to practice all at once because you really made room in your schedule and you pretend to be basically in the classroom with me. But if you are like just practicing because you want something engaging and nice and constructive to do, you can definitely do uh, divide the longest practices in two. We're gonna have uh, probably three videos, three practices about value. Two will be one is this one, another one is also gonna be very colorful. It's just I wanted to make it more 
engaging and interesting. And then we're going to do a little, like a one that is black and white, a little more formal. So you also get the introduction to value if you have to draw something a little more realistic. So that is a little more formal, I would say, as a practice. So it might be a little less, definitely it's going to be less colorful. Maybe it's going to be just a little more challenging, but it is good to challenge us sometimes with something that maybe we are not enjoying as much as this beautiful, colorful gelato, but it's something that is going to give you so much knowledge, right, that you really want to. Now, I set for myself this palette of pink, and hopefully I remember the right order because I moved them. <laughs> so... This one, if you don't have, or if you don't want to do the um, value scales on the pink, you don't have to, okay? I'm glad if you have at least the three primary colors, the red family, the blue family, and the green family. Right now, more than gelato, they recall, you know, the Pac-Man, the video game, probably young generation well it's a pretty famous video game a young generation i don't know my generation definitely knows the pac-man they look like the little ghost in pac-man just more colorful of course first uh, we have a second pink my this is very bright it's almost neon pink for example i am never i was never a pink type of person or a pink type of girl i never really liked pink sometimes i have a hard time kind of to include um, the family of pink and violet in my artwork i like a light violet definitely more than any pink sort of a lavender color but so this practice is good for me also to kind of reconnect with a color that I don't use so much it's a good reflection let me see which one was this yes I'm using the right one this one I can tell that is not as um new as the other markers so i'm going to use the short strokes technique because i know that the ink is almost over and i wanted to use it until the very last drop so i'm going to use a short you see how short are my movement very very tiny friends if you do like that once again i tell my students and i cannot stress this concept enough you think that you're doing faster but in reality, you will have to go back and retouch it and the result is not going to be pleasant and you're not going to feel happy. So it's better to go slow and steady, tiny, tiny little movement, fill the gaps, don't leave any white, choose the direction and keep it so you will avoid it to have the strokes in many different directions that will make your piece look really messy. So... And as I say, you can always stop, take a break if you feel that you're tired, but I prefer you to take a break and go slower in this project than you rush through it just because you want to be done and then the result is not as good as it could be. This hot pink, for example, it's not bad. I would use it. My final. And honestly, friends, these look a little brighter and more intense than these, but probably this is more on the family of pink, this is violet. So I actually don't know if I should have switched these two. Anyway, you can see that we go once again from the light all the way to the darkness. When we the darkest color, when we cut them out, we try and we might see if we want to switch them before we glue them together and we create our huge value gelato. 
So what this flavor would be probably would be berries, some kind of berries, strawberry, blueberries, grape, something like that. This, well, pistachio is green, but it's not that green, the real pistachio, but pistachio or pistachio, in the Italian way. Um, but maybe the blue, my goodness, the blue is going to be smurf. You know that when I was a kid in Italy, that was a very popular it was basically vanilla gelato with these uh, blue colors. And I always, I wanted the Smurf. Every child wanted the Smurf, of course. For the cones underneath, we're going to grab a brown, maybe, if I can find it. Yep. Very quickly, we are going to do the outline. Outline. outlines instead to color maybe we can do a cross hatching so we can do once again straight line patterns cross hatching that we review together in several of our previous videos and practices so very slow take your time you will do diagonal lines in one direction And then we are going to do diagonal lines in the other direction. So we are, instead of coloring, well, we are still coloring the cones just through a pattern. And we repeat the same for the three or four cones that you created with me. Remember, if you're subscribed to my channel, you, you know, you can uh, send me question and comment. If you are a kid, you need to ask permission from your parents. Not that there is nothing, you know, um, inappropriate in the comment. It's just that I want to make sure that parents and students and kids, so we are all on the same page. This is for me is very important. If you are like, you just want to say hi or just say, hey, I really enjoy this practice or this practice was challenging for me or I prefer this practice instead of that one or now I learned that, you know, do so. If you have a question about material supplies and anything at all, please uh, send me like a question. I will do my best to answer. If you are practicing with me, I'm now using a black markers just to do the outline. So you can do this or you cannot do it. You know, you can just leave them the way they are without outlines. I usually do this pretty thick outline with students. First, because it's a good practice for them to go over and retrace the line. And second, because it's going to be a good reference when it's time to cut. Cutting those will be a little challenging from the bottom, that as you can see is like a, a curved line, but it is also an extremely important exercise. I make my students cut a lot, so we use technique of collage and mixed media because I think that there is so many, there is so much coordination included in the practice of cutting. And I sometimes I see so many people, even adults uh, or older students, uh, that struggle to cut along the line because probably they didn't get the opportunity to practice uh, so much. And I want to make sure that I'm giving you this opportunity to practice. Now, once again, when you cut, you can go slower than I will go. You can go faster. You do you. If you're very young and you want to help for your parents, if they are available, you know, let them help you. Maybe you can cut a two, 
family of colors and then they can cut the other two to speed up a little bit of practice or you can as i always say take breaks and do it a little by little because now at this point you know where we are going we are going to cut our gelatos we are going to cut our bottoms and the top and then we're gonna glue them together in the right value order all the way from light to dark and we create this beautiful fancy gelato they will look beautiful and you can actually use them even um, um, as uh, bookmarks they would be perfect actually i think that i'm gonna use mine as bookmarks because i love to read and i always lose my bookmarks or i leave them around and then i hate when i have to kind of uh, you know remember the number of the page that i was reading or I have to do the tiny little, like I need to bend the corner of the page, which I don't want to do it because I want my books look always brand new. And here we go. Now we put away the markers and we start our cutting. And we are going to cut. I will personally cut first the cone. Try to do your best to go, you know, near the edges. You can even like cut the paper like this. Sometimes I really encourage you to cut the paper into different sections so you have them. You can do also this look. We cut the sessions and then for, for your own convenience, you can cut scale by scale. Oh my, they look so beautiful. Even like, you know, it's really true that really colors are fantastic. The colors are really, and that's it. You have your section. So let's keep going. For example, another activity that I always love is cutting. So, you know, I'm a generation before technology and we were, we spend so many afternoon just getting bored. This is how you would define, oh, this is boring. But for us, it was the way that we used to spend our time. I used to stay in the afternoon with my grandma because my parents were working. And I would spend really afternoons after afternoons and hour after hour just uh, watching my grandma to sew stuff, uh, um, cutting. And so I would ask for scissor. I would ask for bottom and I would spend my time cutting and creating my own things. So as you can see, my friends, I'm not moving my scissors, but what I move is the paper around. So basically you keep your hand right or left, whatever you're using to cut, and then you move the piece around. Mostly when we have to do this, uh, um, not zigzag, like these rounded lines. And if you leave a little bit of white around, it's perfectly okay we can always retouch it at the end with the um, with the black markers if we feel like as i say remember friend this is just a good practice this exercise is not about cutting or cut off or collage is about value so we are just using a project to kind of understand better how we can represent the value through colors okay so i'm gonna cut one complete ice cream we're gonna put it together and then i'm gonna let you do the other ones and in the next video i'm gonna show you mines because i will complete the mines as well but i don't want this video to be too long and it's already you know like uh, 40 minutes so i wanted to make sure that we keep it we keep our practice into a reasonable time you see i'm moving i'm moving the paper move the paper turn it turn it again and then turn it again it's a little tricky at the beginning but once you um, learn this nice uh, cutting technique is gonna be so helpful and it's going to allow you to cut even more complicated shape you 
go slow if you want to just like a bubble cut around and then trim the paper if you want a bubble cut around and then maybe uh, an adult or a parent can kind of help you to cut it more precisely whatever is best for you if you are an intermediate if you're an older you know artist watching my video and kind of do this project actually you should be able to cut this without any problem and challenge if you face some challenges because you maybe you didn't have the opportunity to practice your cutting skills and this is an extremely important practice for you because it's a lot of coordination of brain hand So let's put together our first uh, gelato. You have the glue stick. We are going to place our cone. And remember, we are going from the lighter. You put always the glue on the back. If you're using liquid glue, just a little drop, really. And then we overlap it a little bit, the first one with the cone, because it's going to be our, uh, the base, right? Then we are going to go on to with the second. We always put the glue on the back of the shape that we are gluing so we don't have, you know, we don't spread the glue everywhere. We are going to overlap it a little bit. We keep going. And you press it down, keep going, make sure that you're following the right order of the color. But if you did the practice exactly as I did, it should be all good. And there we go. Look how beautiful a new gelato, exactly like a as big as the ones that I will eat in Italy. So we are going to do the same with the blue, with the green, with the purple. And you will cut the pieces and you will glue them one by one, starting from the lightest all the way to the darkest on. So make sure that uh, um, you take your time to do so. Now I'm gonna switch the camera so we can say a proper goodbye and some reminders for our next video. Okay guys, before recording this final video, I took the time to finish to cut all of my gelatos and I want to show you the way that they look like. As I told you, I will probably use one or two for as a bookmarks and you can do the same, you can, you know, use them but I would save at least the one inside the folder so the portfolio that we are creating so you have a visual refer reference of what is the element of value looks like when we represent it through colors so remember oh, sorry we cut together you see all the family of colors so this is a family of red all the way from light to dark we did the same with the blue light to dark that's basically my favorite and the green and then finally the pink and purple family. And this is how our gelatos look like. Today's practice was um, not extremely challenging. However, it required a lot of time and it required different steps. We were able to review good quality of lines to trace the shapes and to create the pattern, good technique to color no matter what you use, markers, color a pencil or crayon. So the goal is that you want to really fill the space with a bright, intense and saturated color so you can see how value works through them. If you color with like a leaving gaps, so with like strokes going in every direction, you won't be able to see the value through the colors exactly the same way that I can see in mine. Remember, 
a long practice, you can break the practice in two. You can practice the first, uh, listening the directions, designing your pieces and coloring two of them. And then the second practice, you will color the other two. You will glue them and cut them together. I will write in the description box uh, all the list of the materials and the recommendation how to face this practice. As I told you, we're going to have another couple of practices about value. Another one is going to be through colors, so just probably a little faster because we're going to use watercolors if you want to kind of prepare yourself already. And another one is going to be a little more like a formal practice because I want to show you different techniques that we have to shade. We, we can use to shade using pencil that is going to be extremely helpful uh, in the future if you want to really master the realistic drawing, uh, realistic painting, and it's going to help you to understand the element of value that now we know that is so, so important. Please like the video, spread the word if you like this content, um, subscribe to my channel, make sure that if you have any questions, you send me your questions and I will do my best to answer and I'll see you soon in another video. Ciao a tutti!